All right, guys, this is Andre, Love Crossing Borders. Just wanted to let you guys know I want to hit on the topic. I got three part series, one, two, three, three part series that I'm doing in regards to Columbia in games. Yeah, the Columbia in games, just like the Avengers in games, we're doing Columbia in games because at the end of the day, many of you want to either relocate or visit Columbia, and I'm here to help you out with that. Can you get a passport as a felon? Let's find out. There's seven things that we're going to talk about that can hold you back from getting a passport, but we're going to talk about also how to overcome those seven things. First things first, we're going to talk about is child support. Yeah, the shorties. If you owe, now every state is different, but if you owe a certain amount, usually it's under $2,500 generally, but each state is different. For example, the state of Michigan is only $1,000 if you owe over $1,000. So if you owe $999, you're good. So make sure that in the state of Michigan, you're under $1,000, you can get your passport when it comes to child support. In the state of Indiana, for example, I haven't studied all the states. In the state of Indiana, for example, is $750. So if you owe $749, you're good. How do I find out what I owe, Andre? First things first. You're going to contact your local child support office. Once you contact your local child support office, you want to talk to the case manager that's over you and your child. After you talk to the case manager, they're able to let you know what your balance is and if you owe back support and how much that might be. Also, they're able to let you know what your state's limitations is when it comes to how child support impacts your passport because they work alongside with the State Department. And it is not hard to do, it's not difficult to do. You, you may have not ever talked to your case manager, which is okay. Start a relationship with the case manager that's over your child support and you, you and your kid or kid, children. Uh, now, you may be a lot lower than what the state requires in order for you to get the passport. Next thing is when it comes to uh, getting your passport or not getting your passport is this. Are you a threat to national security? Let's find out. Let's find out what threats to national security is. First thing is talking about security. When it comes to being a threat to national security, the government is saying this. Anything or anyone that impacts the security of the country or its island or surrounding properties or islands. That's what the government is saying when it comes to national security. The other thing is when it comes to national security is the prosperity of the country. If you're a person that is on either online or using the dark web or doing anything that, that interrupts the economic flow of the country, you're considered a threat to national security. Also, an individual that tries to interrupt the values of the country. If you're a person that sits back saying, we're going to bring somehow behind the scenes, we're going to work to bring back slavery. Uh, yeah, you're a threat to national security. Or if you're a person that sits back and says, well, I don't like this particular culture, so I'm going to blow up their churches, I'm going to escape, you're considered a threat to national security. The final form of being a threat to national security is international affairs. If you're a person that plans on going abroad and doing some crazy things that impacts the United States or makes us look bad, you could be considered a threat to national security. So therefore, you want to make sure that you don't fall up under any of those umbrellas when it comes to being a threat to national security. The next thing is, when it comes to what can hold you back from getting your passport is, hey, listen, you're a minor. That means under the age of 16. Over the age of 16, you can get a passport without parental consent. Over 16, this is how you're going to get your, I mean, under 16, under 16, this is how you're going to get your passport. You can only get it if you have parental written consent of both parents or if one has passed on. You got to have that proof that one has passed on. I'm going to give you a story what I mean by that. If you don't have written consent from guardians or from both parents. There was a woman one time going into the airport, right? It was her and her little girl. Little girl was probably about four years old. What ends up happening is they ended up uh, being stopped, just like regularly at, a, at an airport. She had the passport, her passport, the little girl's passport. Everything was great. But she knew that she needed to have written consent 
from the child's father. And most countries are like this. But at the end of the day, uh, so what ended up happening, she uh, showed them the forms and they put it to the side. She had forged the documents. They realized that her signature was not the signature that the government had on the record for the father. At the same time, they looked at the print, which had been the, the fingerprint, of course. She used her finger. They, they realized it was a female's finger and not a male's finger. So since they looked at the fingerprints of the, of the father and they looked at the signature of the father, they realized that the woman was not uh, being honest when it came to getting parental consent for the minor to be able to travel outside the country. What happened? Hey, the woman got arrested. And her daughter was either taken over, she was taken away, and they waited for the father to come get the daughter. So as a minor, you don't want those situations. And as the parent of a minor, you don't want those situations. So definitely make sure that you get the written consent of the other parent. I know uh, uh, I know of, 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 of friends that I have actually that want to come and visit here and actually may even want to live here because they are Colombian. But... They can't because the father lives in the States and he's like, listen, you're not going to be taking my daughter to uh, live in Colombia, even though you can visit Colombia, but you can't take my daughter to live in Colombia. And he has that right to uh, make that statement. And number four that can hold you back from acquiring your passport is this. You travel outside the country, an emergency happened. What happened, Andre? I don't know. But at the end of the day, you need to go to the U.S. Embassy and they had to give you a loan to get on. So you maybe be doing a flight and you had to get another passport, whatever it may be. But the U.S. government looked out for you monetarily. And you came back home and you kind of overlooked it. So now you want another passport. And guess what the government said? No. Why? Because you still owe them for them looking out for you or supplying for you and, and, and or your family while you were overseas until you get that all you have to do is get that balance taken care of whatever it was and you'll be eligible to acquire your passport once again and so that brings us to number and that brings us to number five the number five reason why you don't have your passport but hey don't worry about it you be able to acquire your passport is this the irs you knew this is going to be on the list the IRS not saying that you, because you owe back taxes, you won't be able to, to get a passport. To let you know that I know what it's like to still owe and be making payments to uh, the government in regards to your back taxes, yet at the same time, you're still able to acquire your passport. So make sure you find out what your balance is in regards to the federal government and the IRS. And then also start making payments. Like I mentioned before, the first thing that you want to do when it comes to acquiring your passport to fall, see if you fall in any of these categories is apply. If you don't apply, you won't know. Number six, this is the one you've been waiting for. Can I get a passport as a felon, as a person with a, a pass, a checkered pass? Uh, or a person that has a criminal record, let's just put it out there. The answer to that is, yes, you can. Now, under certain drug convictions, it's a lot harder and you may not be able to get it. But for the most part, most individuals can acquire it. Now, I didn't say all drug convictions. Because I know a lot of people that I've had checkered passes that I've met in my travels. And also, I didn't have, I'm, the Andre that you see today is not the Andre of the past. So I have several numerals behind my name. I'm, I'm not as innocent. I, I'm not innocent at all. So I can relate to a lot of what you guys have gone through when it comes to questioning yourself. Like, man, can I acquire my, my passport or not? Well, just to let you know. I'm just living in Colombia, and I've been using my passport for years. Nothing held me back. It wasn't like I had to go through a special questioning or anything. Then what is it that can hold you back from getting your passport when it comes to felony? You cannot be A on house arrest. That's a given. 
you're currently taking care of, of, of a case. You cannot be in the middle of a case right now. If you have court dates and you're going in the middle of a case right now, you will not receive a passport. That's a given. Also, if you're on parole or probation, you will not be able to get a passport until after your parole or probation obligations have been completed. Once you're done with those, hey baby, go ahead, apply for your passport, and go ahead and start your traveling. So once you're done with house arrest, take care of that. Once you're done with parole or probation, take care of that. And once you're done with the case that you're dealing with, maybe you may have to do a little bit of time for it, or maybe you may get off the case at the end, of, or you may win the case. At the end of the day, just think about it. You will be able to get your passport even though, yeah, that was kind of like itching right there for a minute. Even though, man, now the other one's itching because this one started itching. That's crazy, right? But my point is, even though, now you know that even though you had a felony conviction or convictions in the past, you will be able to acquire your passport. And take it from me, so you and I be able to have some drinks being ex thugs getting love from the government. Number seven, final reason. What holds you back? Andre, what is it? What is it? What is it that can hold a person back from getting their passport? Is this you? You're the only thing that's holding you back from acquiring your passport. Everybody that knows me knows I've been holding a campaign, a national campaign for the last uh, two years. Every Christmas, passports over Jordans. Anybody that knows me knows passports over Jordans. I don't tell you, acquire your passport for, first or acquire your passport next. Before you get that next Xbox, before you get those next LeBrons, before you get those next Jordans, get your passport. Why do I say that? Because you never know what may happen. I give you a perfect example of a great country that was strong in economy and everything was going beautiful and they fell apart. And they've been on your news for the last few months. Venezuela. You can tell Venezuelans nothing. Everything's going great. They actually sit on the world's largest oil reserve. And what ends up happening? Everything fell apart. So... The individuals in Venezuela that had passports and were able to get out of the country and to start a new life, they're gone. The rest of them had to either stay there or they had to hope that Colombia, which Colombia did for a minute, open up their borders so they'll be able to come across. But other than that, they weren't able to do anything. But those that had a passport were able to start new lives in other countries. So now you've heard it, now you know what to do. You heard all seven things that can hold you back from getting your passport, but you just got a chance to hear about all seven ways how you can acquire your passport. Like I always say, there's commercials for everything in the world, but have you noticed there are no commercials for your passport? The question of the day is this, for those of you that have acquired a passport, I want you to put down in the comments section was there a time that you believed that you couldn't get your passport, but you were able to get it anyway once you got the courage to simply apply? That's a, basically a yes or no question. Did you get your passport during a time period when you actually thought within yourself, wow, I didn't even know I could get it? So let others know and let others be encouraged by your statement. And so that's the question or the statement for the week. Once again, I'm Andre. With Andrea, we love crossing borders. We appreciate all you guys that take your time out to watch the videos, watch our uh, growth and transition into a bigger and broader audience. That, and then we go to different locations. We want to let you know that we appreciate you. We thank you. Now, you may not know yet that you haven't subscribed yet to our channel. So right now, because a lot of you watch, but many of you have not subscribed. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you haven't, uh, put the put the notification so you'll be able to uh, get updated information on, on Love Crossing Borders. Make sure that before you leave this channel today that you subscribe. And remember,